Hey, hello guys. Welcome back to another episode of On Fire Fishing Hawaii. I'm your host, Joe, and if you like fishing and diving, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, on this episode, I actually get to go fishing with a couple fans. Uh, kind of cool story. So um, I guess this uh, this kid, Kai, he's a big fan. Um, he said his uncle and his uh, grandparents live here in Hawaii, and his grandparents actually live right down the road from me. And he's saying he's visiting, visiting them for a little while, and he said he went whipping this whole summer or whatever he was visiting them and he didn't catch anything so he was wondering if i could just take them out and just kind of just show them the ropes just you know spread the law spread the knowledge yeah so we all started somewhere guys right i mean we both know that you don't just magically know how to fish so i think it's really good to teach people fishing you know locals outside everybody just to go hey that way you can kind of educate people and really share your knowledge and make things better for this world, you know? So guys, remember, aloha goes both ways, right? You have to give aloha to get aloha. For me, I just, I'm like Joe Aloha. So I just try to give it to everybody and hey, if it comes back, it comes back, right? So we're gonna go, uh, I'm gonna show them how to go whip with a water bubble. And um, I told them, hey, guarantee catch. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Just joking. I would never say that. You know what I mean? Like, you never say guarantee catch. But I told them, 90% chance we'll probably at least get you on something. So, uh, let's, uh, I'll just show you how to, I make my whipping rig and let's go. Holo, holo. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to head out with uh, Kai and Ethan. Uh, we're going to go out whipping this morning. Um, just try to make a video. They're just visiting their grandparents here. So, uh, wish us luck. All right. Let's go. Holo holo. All right. So, we're all pre rigged and ready to go. Um, right now, it's early morning and it's perfect. It's a low tide. We're right at the bottom low and it's rising. So, I like to fish that low tide when it's rising. I told them, hey, let's walk all in onto the point and work our way all the way to the edge of the reef. And what I'd like to do is when whipping for papillo and these jacks, I like to kind of just whip and work structure. So any kind of like these mangrove coals or any kind of structure, especially the edge of the reef, they kind of like, that's where a lot of bait fish hang. So that's where a lot of predators would be, right? So on the way out, I told them, hey, just stop, stay still, look at the water, see if you see any swirls, you see any bait fish, just take in everything, right? And then... Then, you know, as we work our way out, cover the ground. Because the name of the game for whipping to me is is covering ground. The more ground you cover, the more um, like lure, more chances that you show the lure to that many more fish, the more chances you have of a bite. So we're just slowly working our way out. Just I kind of like to whip in a fan pattern. Or if you go from a clock, it's maybe like 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, and then... Just keep walking forward and then do the same pattern all the way out till you hit the edge of the reef and you're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm telling them, let's do that all the way out. And once you get to the edge of the reef, let's kind of spread out and everybody just take a an area and we'll just cover some ground and it's just throw it out. I have my water bubble about three quarters full. You can make it about half to three quarters depending on how far or how windy it is. And I'll just throw it out and I'll bring it back at a moderate speed and make sure you just see that splashing in that pop that's what you want and then I'm of course I'm using the aqua lures um, the wama color I really like the disco but I kind of ran out already so I gotta go order more <laughs> but uh, these wama ones look pretty cool so as you can see you see how I'm like reeling and popping that's what you kind of want to do almost mimicking a bait fish that's running away or something chasing and what that does is it attracts the fish to that bubble and then he'll see the grub trailing behind it like a wounded or a running fish and he'll come in and hit it. And then sometimes if you feel a miss, you got you almost want to slow down your crank to a to a pop, 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 like a slower pop. And then usually it'll jump right on. So here we go. Let's just work our way out.
Ooh, there you go. Easy, easy, not too hard. hard. Just fight it easy. It's only a 12 pound test. There you go. Huh? What? All right, right, cool, man. There you go. <laughs> oh, what, what, it broke? No! Are you serious? Oh, man, you guys had them. All right, here, come, come over here, I got more grubs. And what we'll do is uh, we'll work the edge. Oh, that was mean. Yeah, come over here and grab a grub. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I was like, oh, man. Yeah, I look like a good one, too. There you go, Ethan. Yeah, perfect. Oh, man, shucks. I couldn't yeah, believe that one that. came off. But uh, that's fishing, though. I'm, but I'm glad, like, in the first, not even 10 minutes, at least, Kai was able to hook up with a nice papillo. Look like a good size one, but all right, time to put new grubs on, rebait, and uh, nice. try again. And I like to keep a little bag like this, yeah. just with a couple grubs, a couple little spare stuff, and Whatever all my pre rigs like I showed you guys. Which one is but, this one, right? All right, you're gonna use these uh, Aqua the Owama color. Like I said earlier, I, I like the I like this black and gold one, the disco color one, but ah. Uh, these ones seem like they're doing good, so right on. <laughs> all right, let me go show you actually how I make all my rigs and what I'm using in this tackle tip yeah, section. <laughs> Come here right now. So when I'm walking out in the water, I don't want to be tying line, carrying a bunch of gear that could get wet or get all my hooks and stuff all wet. So what I do is I make pre-rigs and I put it on this piece of cardboard, just cut a couple slices in it and that's going to hold your line like Damashi style. Right now I'm using 12 pound test for carbon. I think for carbon really does make a difference. So I'm gonna make, depends on the length of your pole. When I'm using the grubs, I usually go like four or five feet. And that's my minimum. And then just gonna tie that to a nice little swivel. So you have your main line, your water bubble, and make sure to if you use a water bubble, make sure the pointy side is up towards your main line. And then to a swivel, then about four, foot about 12 pound test uh, liter and about that size hook this is like your simple I think these are MZ hooks so if you're going for something smaller you can use smaller hooks but that's about the right size to catch anything and everything if you're going for bigger papil of course use a little bit bigger size MZ hook and maybe bigger grubs so I'm gonna do a, just a simple fisherman's knot little cinch knot I don't know if you can see it but you have two choices. You can either wrap it around the shank or you could just wrap it around the main line. You could go either way. I, I've done them both ways. They're both fine. So whatever you, whatever works for you, that is the knot you should tie. Whatever you, you know, you're comfortable with and you can do it in your sleep. That's the one you should tie. So just put it through, wrap, make a loop, wrap it around seven times, right back through, pull it tight. And this is a helpful hint. So grab a good pair of scissors, Put the hook through there and that's how you can tighten it up because i've seen people trying to hold it with their fingers and when they try to pull it tight they yank too hard and it slips and they hook themselves in the lip or the cheek so especially you're a beginner you know use your scissors put the hook in there and then that way you can tighten it up that knot without having any slippage or accidental hooking yourself and uh these little glass red beads i also think is a must i mean maybe it's just lucky luck but I really does think it attracts the fish a lot more and then this side what I do is I just make a because I'm making it where I can just tie it on the outside where I don't need to tie anything don't need to do anything I just put a figure eight on a bite so I just make a loop so that way when I on the outside all I have to do is if I have a snap swivel I just have to snap swivel onto that loop if you're using a regular swivel you could just do that and girth it because you feed it through and all the way through but right there, that's one liter done. So I'll usually make about two, three liters. But since I'm going with the, these guys and they might uh, lose a couple, I made a couple extra for them. And this is one of the keys I, I've kind of learned over the years is everybody used to feed their grubs all the way through the center of the grub, then out like a spine. 
I found that all you need to do is hook the tip, just that very first line of the grub, right through there, and it'll run straight every time. Because what happens is when you put it through the center and you try to slide it up, it might present nicely at first, but as you start to whip, as the thing wears out, if there's a lot of drag on it, something grabs on it, this this grub will actually slide down your hook, unless if you're using the eagle claw ones with the little barbs, and then it'll start to run real funny, it'll start to spin, it won't run good, it won't run straight. So I like to just hook it right to the tip, and to me, every time it runs straight, good, clean, and, and if, the thing is, if it's a small papill, it'll miss, and you're gonna let them go anyway. If it's a big papill, it'll swallow that whole thing, and you'll get a better hookup, and uh, because there are more of your hook exposed, it'll, it'll land more fish. All right, so we just put this on the cardboard, wrap it up, and it'll just stay like that, and you're ready to go. And I hope this helped you guys. So if this really does help you guys, make sure you give me a thumbs up. All right. Yeah, so I just threw in a couple extra uh, swivels, couple of egglets, just in case. I might throw an extra bubble in here. But if you lose the bubble, I mean, something went bad. <laughs> but that's it, pretty simple. Go we'll throw this inside the bag, and then we're gonna just walk out and hopefully catch some papillos. All right. Cool, Roger. Now back to fishing. <laughs> All right, I'm coming close to the edge. You guys can see the edge? So it's like kind of ah. sand to reef to um to that deep blue area i stuck <laughs> sorry i'll get them out just walk over there shake them a couple times should come right out and then what we want to do is uh, walk to the edge of the reef get to the hard pack reef where it's all solid and you're just gonna take a spot and you're just gonna work the edge once i get unstuck <laughs> Yeah. So you're just like splashing it and then you know track it almost like a wounded bait fish or whatever. Oh! Oh! Oh baby. Oh I hit right at the edge. <laughs> How's that? Right before it came off the reef. All right, here we go. So, to be legal, it has to be 10 inches. So I have my marker right here. So it's it's almost there. But we'll let you go. All right. Good lucky day. Yep, probably. Sorry, sorry. There you go. Let them go to let them grow. Who Roger? Buddy. Woo! Get it. I was like, hit like right at the, like I was bringing in like, it's only a foot away when it hit. <laughs> Alright, that turtle. Remember, no touching or messing around with those turtles. They protect it, huh? <laughs> So we ended up working the reef for about another, I would like to say half hour, an hour. And the weather started getting bad and the, the tide started to come up. So I said, hey, you know what, let's keep working this area for a little while more and then start working our way in so it's not too high tide and swimming back Ooh, in. Ooh, it is getting ugly. <laughs> All right, let's just work our way in. <laughs> As we say in Hawaii, 
hey, if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. Actually started to get started to clear up and uh, it was perfect. So we decided to try uh, hit the inside area, work the mangroves and some of this other structure. <laughs> Small one. Barracuda. <laughs> All right, try not to bite me. Ethan hooked up. Barracuda cut your line. Yeah, I bet your Barracuda hit it. Come over here, I'll have extra. Yeah, I guarantee Barracuda came in. Kick. Yeah, no, it'd probably, it'd probably be a Barracuda that like will cut you off like that. Like mine was lucky enough you hit the hook. But if they touch the line, it's gone. The weather started getting pretty bad again, so I told them, yeah, let's try hit this final spot and hopefully get them on, uh, hopefully get Ethan on at least something. Oh, really? We'll take a couple more casts and then uh, we'll start heading in and then uh, get whip on the way in. Because you can feel that wind come up. That wind is usually in front of a storm. So there's a front coming, so the wind will pick up. So that gray area will probably dump on us in about 20 minutes or less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your time. Just let you guys know. That's the plan anyway. Hanapa, fish on. Got one? Hey, you got one, Ethan, right? There you go. Ah, oh, I seen it. it broke, huh? Oh, you had it. I seen it. Your pole was bent right there. No, but it's right at the reef edge. I think it was over the reef edge. You're pulling it. It just I must have caught the reef. Cause I seen you. You had it. And I was like, oh, tip off. Oh, <laughs> I seen you here. I was like, there. Okay. <laughs> like I don't think you stuck. Hey, at least you guys got on. Cause he said uh, you guys went a couple days and didn't really hook up. So I'm glad you guys uh been getting some or hooking up. The weather started turning for the worse, so I said, hey, tide's coming up, let's just call it a day. At least we all um, got hooked up on some fish. Good times, man. That one looked pretty good. Hey, thank you guys again for watching another episode of On Fire Fishing Hawaii. And, uh, oh yeah, leave a comment, guess 1 to 50. Uh, next week I'll just pick a winner. Uh, you guys know the deal. But if you guys want one of these stickers here. <laughs> so actually... I'll give you either a sticker or you can choose one of these grubs that I have left from Akuai Lures. But um, end of the day for this trip was pretty good. I ended up getting like, I think one Papil, two Barracudas, but catch and released everything. Um, and what's even better was uh, both Kai and his friend finally got on some fish. Like they both hooked up with a Papil. Uh, they weren't able to bring it in, but I think just that memory alone will we'll make their trip. And their family was just so nice. Like the dad even tried to give me money for beer later, but I was like, you know, just the happiness in their faces and the appreciation from the family was meant it all. So remember guys, just show the law, spread the law. Remember, take care of yourselves, take care of others. Until next time, I catch you on the next one. Hello guys. Woo.